Hello everyone, it's Serenity. So, <laughs> probably a lot of you have questions as to why, why, why about, you know, Jehovah, these things in the Bible. So today, what I'm going to do is hopefully, I kind of hinted at this in previous videos, but today I'm going to be blunt and I needed some other source of information to back me up because a lot of times there is things that I say um, and teach basically that there is no proof for it has been destroyed or it is being hidden and not released to the public so I have to wait until there's something to back up what I've hinted at in previous videos so that's what the video today is going to be about now it may disappoint a lot of people who want to be, believe that <laughs> Jehovah is this supernatural being with supernatural abilities and all of that. That's why I'm not afraid of Jehovah. All these ones who want to invoke fear and say, fear of God, fear of God. No, I'm not afraid. I know Jehovah a little too well. <laughs> but he is nothing to be feared and that's why he tries so hard to prove himself as powerful. Now basically, what gave who most people know as Jehovah or Yahweh in the Bible his power is his access to highly advanced technology. It's true. Like I said before, there are other beings, energies in the universe, different div dimensions that are Advanced on a level that most humans, because of the way their minds were conditioned, cannot comprehend. Okay? So, even this book, it was deliberately inspired, translated, manipulated to hide the truth of humanity's past. Okay? So, in Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 1 through 28, it talks about basically God's glory, all right? Now, God's glory, you might think, is a supernatural energy or presence, but it's not. It's actually his... <laughs> now, people, don't click off the video once I say this. I promise I will find a video, a recent one, because this wasn't... This knowledge wasn't out before now, but like I said, now the light or the truth needs to be out there so people can break free of the conditioning that this system that's controlled by these low vibrational energies have created, okay? Now, in Ezekiel, basically, it talks about Yahweh's or Jehovah's <laughs> Spaceship, for lack of a better word. That's what I'll say. His spaceship and also other spacecrafts that were here on Earth. They had bases, um, all of these things, um, and also could travel throughout dimensions. So they could literally come, take certain humans that they wanted to influence, and then let them see what they needed to to make them believers and then tell them, okay, you're on my team and you will do this in my name and glorify me or else. So in Ezekiel, it explains this. Okay, and also, like I said, Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 18 is where the threats begin. He takes Ezekiel, shows him all these things, but then he's like, okay, if you don't do what I want you to do, this is what's going to happen. That's Yahweh, Jehovah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but it's also why in Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 15 that Ezekiel was so astonished by what he witnessed. It was something beyond human comprehension. Um, but also... You have to realize that if you are a human who is not used to seeing certain things, technology, possibilities, 
it is very hard for you to put into words what you're actually seeing. So a lot of what's in the Bible is basically the best, how do I say it? The best way that humans could interpret what they were seeing, okay? <laughs> so that's what I wanted to say about Ezekiel. Now in Ex uh, Exodus chapter 19, 11 through 13, once again, it talks about basically how, so yeah, in Exodus, basically how this Lord or the Lord God, Jehovah, Yahweh, had taken Moses to a mountain. And basically with most of these scenarios, there's always a cloud and fire and that type of thing, but really if you think about spacecrafts and whatnot, there are, basically there's combustion that happens. So <laughs> when you have technology, the amount of heat, fire, light, different things that take place. And like I just said, to a human who's trying to describe these things, they do it the best that they can. But that's what we're seeing here in the Bible. So in Exodus chapter 19, 11 through 13, 16 through 20, I will link all these scriptures for you to read yourself because it's very important that once you realize that the Lord God basically is this entity who goes around <laughs> in a spacecraft, He kind of loses that that whole facade of being this all-powerful, mighty one. Like, he wants humans to believe, okay? So, that's why also, sometimes he was asked, where did you come from? And he's like, from wandering to and fro, because that's just what he did. <laughs> I'm sorry, this shouldn't be funny, but it is. Um, okay, so in Exodus, like I mentioned, there's the clouds. Moses had actually seen this spacecraft vessel and also its movement and whatnot, which is why he had to hide in a crack to protect himself from the heat and light that's emitted from these spacecrafts. But even him in the rock and the crag could not truly shelter him from, from the radiation basically coming from the spacecraft. So that's why afterwards his face seemed like it was glowing or shown, but really he was burnt. And that's why he always had to wear a veil when he went before people, but he could take it off when he, you know, <laughs> was basically interacting with the Lord God or Jehovah. And I will once again link scripture so you can link, um, look these things up. So in First Kings, once again, technology where, okay, I'll read that. So, 1 Kings, this is where the prophets of basically Baal and Jehovah <laughs> come to a head. Um, so, yeah. So, 1 Kings 18.18, 18, and it says, And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have. In that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have followed the Baals. Now, the Baals are actually not bad. <laughs> Most of them. But that's why they are this Lord God's, basically, enemies. Now, therefore, send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel, and 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. Yeah, I know. Everyone thinks Jezebel was bad, right? <laughs> Once again, think again of what the Bible is trying to tell you in the narrative and who actually created the narrative of the Bible. All right? So, Asherah. Asherah was actually the counterpart of Jehovah. Just so you know. So, 
in 38, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Now imagine a weapon, <laughs> mind you, this is just a small speck of power, but imagine a weapon because that's essentially what it was, a ray that could come down like fire, dissolve stone, water, everything like that. This is exactly the type of techno technology that this Lord God had access to and why he went around bullying different ones to obey him or basically be executed. This is his mentality, okay? Now, another scripture, Revelations 12, 14. I had mentioned this before about the fight that happened between him and basically the woman. <laughs> because as I said, Source has taken on many physical bodies, I, I would say, in order to accomplish her purpose. Okay, so this was one of those situations, and I did do a video about this as well, just like I did a video about Jesus being not from this world, like at all. So basically, yes, extraterrestrial, an alien, whatever you want to call him, and I'll link that video also either in the description or the comment section, okay? But back to this. So, basically, when this fight happened, in 14, it mentions, But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time, from the presence of the serpent. These wings of an eagle? <laughs> basically, spacecraft, once again. And this is the way that she was able to escape basically being attacked and wiped out by this rebel energy, okay? But once again, it's also why in Revelation, it says you're going to see in Revelation 1-7. Where? Yeah. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. Because there's always clouds surrounding these vessels, <laughs> To hide them and that's why even in the Bible as well there's clouds many of these prophets of Jehovah would go up to the mountains in order to interact with these higher intelligent beings that's basically the best way for me to describe it okay <laughs> so yeah that's what I wanted to say um please the information that I give for you to look at, please look at. Like I said, I don't want you to swallow everything I say. I know what I'm saying, but I'm not here to shove it down anyone's throat. I'm here to open your eyes. And the best way to open your eyes is to point you in the right direction so you can see for yourselves exactly how humanity has been fooled, controlled, and conditioned. Once again, a lot of it by means of this, okay? All right, I love you all. I wish you peace as always, and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye-bye.